Hi, welcome to the channel. Um, after watching my video on my two meter Yagi and getting a few comments and a few emails, I realized I didn't put the information that I really wanted to get into that video in there. I tried to keep it to 15 minutes and sometimes you just can't fit everything in. So today's video is going to be about that Yagi um, video that I did and I will give dimensions, uh, what I use, you know, pretty much how I built it and a lot of close-up pictures of it. I'll, I'll leave a link to that up there in the corner to that video. So let's get on with the show and uh, hopefully I can clear up a few things for everybody. Let me uh, just show you, do a little sweep of this antenna. So this antenna basically, sorry, is made for one. It was built for 144.3 for, for the uh, sideband. So if you look, that's pretty close, and it shows 1.4. And if you go up to 140. 146520 it's about 1.1 and then some of the some of the uh, popular um, 147 195 is a popular repeater on here and 1.1 and you go up to as you go farther up it gets better it's it's a little short so this whole antenna fits in this little bag uh, with actually room to spare. It's not like it it maxes it out or anything. And the bag itself measures just under 25 inches or pretty probably 25 inches. Okay. So I don't even know where I got this bag. I think it was for a tripod or something. So what I have in here First thing, it's the hardest thing to get out, that's why it's last, first out. Alright, this is the mounting bracket to the, uh, kind of shiny, to the uh, pole for the mount to the, the pole that I put it on when I'm not portable. It could be anything really, it could be a fiberglass mast or a metal post. Now, if you're going to do it vertical, you basically want to uh, make sure there's nothing in the line of the uh, the elements. So you're you're probably better off to put a piece of PVC at the top of the of your pole then to uh, mount it, to, unless you're using like a fiberglass pole. Hardest part of getting these out basically is the. Uh, well, I'll show you in a second. all the parts. Now, if you were to build this yourself, a six foot piece of blue material is enough. And if, if I was you, if I was to do this over again, I'd probably buy some half inch square stock tubing instead of the round. It would just be easier to drill, especially if you have a drill press, you can put it on there, everything will be nice and straight. But it, as you saw in the other video, I had a, a way of doing it with a little V-block. Now this is the shortest piece, and it just happened to be a piece that I already had that was cut this length, or close to this, and it already had the first element right where I wanted it. So that's where I started from. At the ends here, what I did is I've got a piece of uh, solid stock that I throw in there. I threaded that all the way through too, and that's where the joints come together. So if you if you look at the end, this would go this would slide inside of here. Now the feed point is basically like a dipole. You have, have a piece of coax that I made a for better terms an ugly ballon. Uh, they basically from what I read they said to take a, a 
like a paint can and do three full turns for two meters. I have, uh, what I did is I split the, uh, the coax with the braid and the center parts and one goes to one side, one to the other, and it doesn't matter which side. The only other thing here is you want to isolate it from the boom and I'll show you a little in a little bit, but these are, these are the ends of the arrows that I cut off to make a contact because these are plastic and it, it wasn't making contact. And I basically, I'm going to replace the plastic inserts on all but this arrow. This is the driven and I'll leave the plastic one there. It's fine because you don't really want to make continuity between side to side. You want to be separate. The other thing I did is I, each one I marked with different colors, red, and there's blue. And then I put the same thing on the elements. Just makes it easier when you're out in the field to uh, get them in the right place. Now what I did also on this, because I know this would happen eventually, I did SO239 on the end of the coax. This is 195, uh, LMR 195 from Belden. Pretty decent stuff and it's only about two feet, two and a half feet long. Well, I knew for sure that if I went out and I had a couple, two, three, four miles, I got out there and I'd forget a barrel connector. So that took that out of the equation. Now these are all thread. I'm not going to take it all the way out, but I'll take it part way. And they just thread in, I thread them halfway. I actually had to cut mine just a little because they, uh, for some reason, there was no hole inside the, uh, the arrows. This is half inch tubing, and I bought this at DX Engineering a long time, a long time ago for another project. I had bent these elements and I just kept the, I pretty much keep everything. My wife will tell you that, but uh, I straightened it out as straight as I could get it. This stuff doesn't have to be perfect to work. The more perfect you make it, the better it is though. All right. So here's the, the tape I put on here. If you look, at the end of these, this is a plastic insert for the thread. They're 8x32. 8 8x32. By 32. 8 by 32. Um, number 8 bolt, 32 thread. 32 thread. Um, and I had cut these off flush and then I, I, I ground, I filed down the edges so I could, so it would make contact to the boom. And that entail gave me a one piece across. Well, it didn't really work. That's why I'm going to change these to metal. Uh, when I noticed a few times when I was uh, putting 50 watts through it, I'd get a little spike in the in the SWR. So I'm going to fix that. And other than that, um, not a whole lot more to it. Uh, I try to mark these things because you know drilling it yourself and it's not you know you don't have a machine shop or anything to do it in. I'm, I'm changing the screws. I did buy a little bo a box of screws, 832s. I'll use these things. So it was. To tell you the truth, it wasn't very expensive to buy a whole box of them. I got this design off the internet and I'll, I'll post that link down below so that you guys can uh, look at that. But I'll, I'll get a tape measure here and we'll measure, I'll put the boom together and we'll measure all this stuff. So give me a chance to uh, set this up and I'll be right back. Okay, this is, you can see how this mounts on here. And then what you do is you run your this part down and then you run your coax down your pole okay don't try to go through any of your elements that will help some okay so the first let me give you the, the overall dimensions of the boom Okay, the boom is 58 inches, 58 and one half inch. The reflector is where I started. No, actually, I started from the other end. It doesn't really matter. It's about a quarter inch from the end. And then from that one to the driven is 11 and 3 sixteenths. To the first director is 17 
and 3 16 so the next one is 37 and 3 8 and then the last one it's like 57 and 7 8 I don't know, and also, well, also, I, if you look here, I've got, I need to clean this up a little bit, but I've got two holes drilled this direction, and what you do is you will take the mounting bracket and mount to those two holes for vertical. So it, everything sits in a vertical, so that would flip this this way. All right. I think that just about covers it, uh, other than the, the internet connection to the internet. Uh, site that I used. Uh, what's this antenna made for? Well, how about technicians? This is a band that technicians can use. Anybody, any any ham can use these bands. It's a good little antenna. It weighs about 21 ounces, maybe just a little bit more after I change this part. It's a little bit beefier than what I had before. Um, I could take it apart. <laughs> kind of hard to weigh in this configuration but it was 21 ounces before I say it's probably not over 23 24 ounces now so definitely light if you look at anything this size they're about three pounds the light ones that's M squared M squared makes some really light really nice antennas for a price and uh, they're some of the lighter ones they're, they're about three pounds for a three or four element antenna like this they use, a little, they use one inch here instead, you know, it's a little beefier. Um, these, I'll tell you what, this stuff here, these are these arrows, and I, I'm gonna go ahead and link the same ones that uh, that um, Adam linked in his, and, and the inserts and stuff, and, and that's the way to go. When you do put the inserts in, like he said, you wanna make sure that you um, get the anodizing off the inside of these to make sure it makes continuity. Check your continuity, make sure you're making continuity to the inserts so that when you screw them together through the all threads, it makes one long one. All right, I don't think there's a whole lot more I can talk about. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and put them down below. Uh, I'm pretty good about answering most questions. I'm, I'm a little station, I don't get a bunch, so. All right, well, thanks for joining me today. Hopefully this will clear up uh, any confusion if anybody had uh, maybe making their own uh, two meter Yagi from this uh, deal. And uh, if, you, if you do have any comments or uh, any more questions, just leave them down below or email me. Doesn't matter, I, I'm pretty, pretty good at answering when I get a chance to. So this is Chuck, KK6USY from Ham Radio Adventures. Thanks everybody, 73 all.